Hello, my magnificent mamas, and welcome to another marvelous and miraculous episode of Quick Wine with me, your host, Johnny McGovern. Today's show is going to be monumental. Our guest today puts the blazer in Trailblazer. You might have seen her spill tea with us in the past or on the ballot when your vote was cast. She's the first drag queen to hold public office and a former congressional candidate. I'm talking about the amazing Maybe a Girl. But before she strides on out here, there's two representatives in the Hey Queen Hall that I would like to recognize. It's my emotional support orchestra, Mr. Adam Joseph and Erica Tor Aviance. My goodness, there's a little bit of summer nights from Greece. <laughs> Don't call the copyright police. Sandy. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> spill tea more, spill <laughs> tea more. <laughs> oh, look at the two of you. Oh, oh I am curious yellow. Ooh. I'm mellow yellow. Uh -huh. And I've just got a little golden shower of a bang. <gasps> Oh, my goodness. If you're into that type of thing. Uh -huh, yes. Well, Whatever floats your boat. If it's yellow, let it mellow. Unless you're Erica and Adam, they go crazy! Ah! <laughs> you're looking quite artistical today. So artistic. Oh, well, look at her. Yes, I just was in my painting studio dashing up a design, and it happened to fall all over me in an artistic manner. Thank you, JCRT NY. Ding! Uh, we've got maybe a girl here, honey. She's working for the people. That's Work. right. She's serving the people, darling. Yes, she. She's a politician real big. Is. Yes, honey. Well, uh, hit it, Emotional Support Orchestra. She's turning it out in the political world. She's running. She's stunning. She's maybe a girl. And we'll be back with maybe a girl right after this very gay break. She's gone from exposure drag to exposing the political world to a drag. Please welcome Maybe a Girl. She's turning it out in the political world. She's running, she's stunning, she's Maybe a Girl. Yes. Hey, Queen. Hey, Johnny. Maybe a girl, honey. I've been knowing you for a long time. It has been a moment, hasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you've worked with us at the Hey Queen Studios many different times. Yes. You know what? I am actually so gagged to be here because I've done a number of little one-offs with y'all. This is my first time sitting in the couch. Uh -huh. and I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. It's just undeniable the work you've been doing, the consciousness you've been raising, uh, the work you've been doing locally and for our country. And honey, it just could not be denied. <laughs> you had to get on the sparkle couch. Thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm living for this couch. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's comfier than I thought it would be. Yes. <laughs> it, it's supported in many different ways. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe let's get to the tea. Let's. The tea. You are the first drag queen elected to public office in the United States of America. Wow. Well done, sweetie. <laughs> so tell me now, you were elected to the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council in 2019. Now, uh, tell me your journey into starting to be a, not only a political person, but wanting to be involved in politics. You know, uh, the last almost two years have been such a whirlwind. Um, first of all, I can't believe that I'm at, almost at the end of my first term. Um, when I was elected in early 2019, like you said, I was the first drag queen elected to public office in the whole US. And the gag is when I was running, when I decided to run, I didn't even, I didn't know that. I didn't know that there had never been a drag queen elected to any sort of office. And I, 
kind of how I came about it, I actually saw an ad on Facebook and um, they were like, oh, you should get involved in your local neighborhood and your politics and your city. And I was like, you know what? I think that I can do that and I should do that. And um, so, yeah, so it wasn't actually until after I ran and I won that I, I found out that I was the first drag queen ever elected to any sort of public office in the US. And it just, for me, it was exciting, but it was also a little bit of a disappointment. I was like, really, I'm the first one. I just, knowing how out there queens are and kings and people involved in drag, I was a little surprised that I was the first one. It wasn't something I was trying to do. It was a little bit of an after fact. I was like, oh, okay. You know what, The one of the other amazing things is when you say you're the first drag queen elected to public office, now, when I first heard about maybe getting elected, I assumed like you were just gonna go uh, dressed as a boy to the meetings, but honey, you were like, oh no, <laughs> look at me. You just, you are giving it to them in full geese, sweetie. Exactly, every time, uh, anytime I do a meeting, anytime I, I do a function, I make sure to, to show up in full geese. So always make sure to dress up for it. Um, and you know, for me, it's, um, it's definitely drag, but also as a person who identifies as trans feminine, non-binary, you know, it's a part of my identity as well. So I did decide to run um, under my drag name, my stage name, mm -hmm. you know, my, my birth name, believe it or not, is not maybe a girl. What? I'm not gonna tell y'all <laughs> what it is, uh, but it's not maybe a girl, but I decided to run under my stage name and I decided to run under my persona, just because I really thought it was so important to put very visible, very out there queer representation into the world. Anybody, you, me, our neighbor on the street can get involved, um, help make decisions and help to influence the rest of our city government. So it's almost kind of like a trick, trickle up effect. You can get involved in your local community and make a difference there and then keep it going. Absolutely, you know, um, when I ran for this local position, um, I didn't think, oh, you know what, I'm gonna keep going and go higher. When I ran for this local position, I was, you know, I didn't know how it would go. I didn't know if anybody would vote for me. And it was a scary thing and it was uh, a thing where I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna put myself out there. I'm gonna say what I believe in, what I stand for, what I would like to see, not only in my, my neighborhood, but in my city, in my state, and in my nation. And I was gagged that, you know, that I won, that I got a, a position on the council. And it was a really, really cool thing. I think that local government is one of the most important areas for people to get involved. And I think it's one of the areas where people least get involved. You know, every couple of years, we talk about how important it is to vote. And to many, many people, that means who am I voting for president? And absolutely, that is so, so important. But what's actually even more important is all of the other people that you're voting for. And those are the candidates that um, people unfortunately don't necessarily put as much time and effort into researching. So it's so important to figure out who's running for your particular city council, who's running to be your representative for the House of Res Representatives, who is running for Senate in your state, who is running for local superintendent, who's running for the school board. And, you know, it's, again, it's all of these little positions that if we get enough progressives in office, we can see amazing, awesome change. But when we're only paying attention to who we're voting for presidents, you know, you're not gonna see that much of a change. What's gonna affect you the most is who you're voting for on a local level. And that's something that I would really wanna stress to everybody, not just in LA, but across the entire US and across the world. Yeah, that is so important, such a good point. Now, you're not retired from uh, from showbiz, mm -mm. sweetie. You are, you've still <laughs> been keeping it going. You do a drag brunch called Wigs and Waffles, hosted with you and Indica Sativa. You do that on Saturdays, and our very own beautiful Lady Red would do that with you. Yeah, so our last show was the first week in March, and then the last time that I saw Lady Red, I was actually, I was in her show. She was doing a show at um, Gym Bar in West Hollywood. Yes. It was Friday the 13th, <laughs> oddly wow. enough. And that was the last time that I performed live in person. And it was also the last time that I saw Lady Red. And you know, you never think about 
when you hang out with somebody that you love and enjoy being with, you never think to yourself, oh, this is my last time that I'm gonna get to see them and interact with them. And of course, in retrospect, you're like thinking about all the things that you would love to say to them and everything, but, but that doesn't happen, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm still reeling about Lady Red. I'm still really upset about it. Yeah, about I mean, it's definitely a shock and obviously has been a huge transition for our show and for me personally and everybody that was uh, someone who loved Lady Red. And now I want you to know Lady Red did really like you. As not, uh, <laughs> didn't always happen. Ain't that right, sweetie? <laughs> That's right. Um, because she'd be like, she had a list of girls that she would call for shows and you were on that list. So that is something yes. special. <laughs> no, I, I I cannot like stress enough my, my love for Lady Red. And actually, I was thinking about Lady Red a lot while I was getting ready for this show. Um, you know, um, as I mentioned earlier, I did a number of segments with Hey Queen early on in my drag career. And one of the shows that um, we did was Pimp My Drag. Mm -hmm. And Lady Red taught me a lot of tips. And when we did that, that segment years ago, Lady Red gave me um, some makeup supplies. In retrospect, I think it was a little bit of shade. <laughs> <laughs> she was Which good was for so that too, sweetie. <laughs> but she gave me some like brushes and the gag is I still use one of those brushes specifically like to do some of my contour work and I use it every time that I get into drag and I used it just now when I was getting, getting ready and you know, I think about Lady Red every time I use that and like, it's kind of just like a nice little like memento that I have and like, it's so funny if you looked at this brush, it's literally like, it's falling apart <laughs> like the like, Brushes are the like brushes are coming out. All the paints like peeling off. <laughs> right, but, but I like couldn't bear to like get rid of it. You know, that's good. <laughs> it's got a little bit of that lady red magic on exactly, it. Honey. Exactly, exactly. Hello, children. Click here. Click here. And subscribe. You're welcome.